I started my virtual assistant business back in 2015. And at that time, there was actually very little information online on how to actually get started as a virtual assistant. I heard about the idea from a friend who knew my background, knew that I kind of was interested in marketing, that I had some computer skills. And she said, I think you might be a good virtual assistant. Well, I scoured the internet that night and ended up finding a little bit of information. But to be honest, over the course of building my business throughout that first year and to getting started, it was very difficult to know what to do. And the reason why is because I was really patchworking information together. I would watch a YouTube video, I would listen to a podcast, I'd read a blog article, and I'd get sometimes different information, competing information, and I just didn't know what to do in what order. And so in 2017, when I really started diving into training other virtual assistants, the first thing I did was to create a checklist and starter kit for VAs because it's the tool that I wish that I always had when I was getting started in my business. So if you're looking to become a virtual assistant and you want a complete checklist on how to get started, that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video. My name is Abby Ashley. I am the founder of The Virtual Savvy and here on my channel, I talk all the time about all things virtual assistants. I'm a little obsessed with the topic. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure that you subscribe to my channel and then click the bell to be notified every time I release new content. All right, so here we are inside of our virtual assistant checklist and starter guide, and I'm just gonna walk you step by step through what is inside. Now, we start with the essentials. So when you first start your virtual assistant business, these are what you're going to need to do first. First of all, you're gonna to need to choose the services that you're gonna offer in your business. Now, as a virtual assistant, there are so many services that you can choose from. You might start with general administrative services like answering customer service emails or writing blog posts. Maybe you veer into the social media world or maybe you are good at tech. So you start building websites, whatever your services are, you're gonna to want to decide on those services. Then you're gonna choose a rate. Now, if you're doing something like website design, maybe you'll start with packages, but for most virtual assistants, you're actually gonna be starting just with a simple, flat hourly rate. You will track your time and then you will bill your clients hourly for the work that you do. So most of our VAs start their rate at 25, 30 or $35 an hour. Now you're going to create packages to sell your services as a bundle. For instance, if your rate is $30 an hour and your client is going to be paying you for 10 hours a month, you would just bill them on a reoccurring basis that $300 a month, and then they know what their set expenses, and then you know how many hours you need to work for them for the month. Next, you're going to choose a niche or specific skill set that you'll focus on. And this is actually not a step that is for everyone. You might stay broad. You might say, hey, I'm just gonna service any small business owner, but you may choose to say, hey, I really have a connection to the wedding industry, so I'm only gonna work with wedding professionals, or I really wanna work with those in the health niche. And so you may choose that as a specific niche, or you might say, hey, I want to only do Pinterest management under my virtual assistant umbrella. And so you might go that path as well. Next, you want to decide on the amount of time you can devote to your business each week. Are you going to be able to work an extra five hours a week, 10 hours a week? How many hours do you actually have to commit to your clients? You don't want to be selling a 10 hour per week package if you only have five hours a week to work in your business. Next, you want to create a mission statement for your business. This is really simple to do. You just say, my name is, and that for me, that is Abby. I assist small business owners, whoever your ideal client is, with virtual administration services, virtual assistant services, maybe you'd say Pinterest management services, so that they can and have more time in their business is what I would say if I was doing general admin or, you know, so they can grow their Pinterest profile and bring more traffic to their website if I was a Pinterest manager. Then you're going to create a pricing sheet of your services. Again, once you have those hourly packages, you're going to want your clients to be able to see that really, really clearly. We actually have a whole video that we'll link to below on how to create a portfolio for your business. Then we get into branding. Branding is super fun. This is where your unique personality shines through. So you need to decide what that is. I recommend going to Pinterest and looking at different brand boards. If you're attracted to the color yellow, look up yellow brand board. If you want just something fun and airy, type in fun and airy brand board. You're going to see a lot of different examples. Now, please don't copy these branding boards. These do not belong to you, but they are a great way to get inspiration for what your brand will be like. You're going to choose a name for your business. You're going to make sure that business name is not already trademarked. And you're going to register your name with your state or local government. 
A good way to know what the state requirements are where you live are to go to score.org. You're going to want to purchase your business name domain. I personally use Namecheap. I think that's a great place to buy business domains. You're also going to want to claim your social media names and links. Now, even if you don't plan to start an Instagram account anytime soon, I definitely would go ahead and recommend claiming that domain. For instance, my business name is The Virtual Savvy. So as soon as I decided on that business name, I went ahead and grabbed that Instagram name, even though I wasn't planning to use it quite yet. And then lastly, you're going to choose your branding colors and the fonts that you're going to use in your business. This will help you create your branding board, which we also have a YouTube video linked below that shows you how to do that. Now we jump down to your processes. You're going to actually decide on the tools that you're going to be using inside of this section. There are a lot of different tools and I can't go over all of them inside of this video. However, I will give you some suggestions as we go along. Tools to track your time. Toggle is a really great one. I think that they do a great job at being able to show you reports, being able to show you really where your time is being spent. You can track it among multiple clients. I'm just a really big fan of Toggle. So check that out for your time tracking. You also need to decide on the invoicing and accounting software that you're going to use. I think Dubsado and HoneyBook are my two favorites in that category. You're gonna create a contract. Please, please, please have a contract between you and your clients. We have our VA toolbox for sale over at the virtualsavvy.com slash store. This is our complete contract kit. It includes a contract for your business and also a contract if you ever hire a subcontractor. So these are really, really important to have documents that protect you legally. Please never work without a contract. You're going to create a portfolio of your previous work, then create a welcome packet for new clients outlining your processes. So you need to let them know, how can I be reached? When will we have meetings? What will it look like to share passwords? How will you actually hand off your work to me on a week to week basis? This should all be outlined in a welcome packet or a kickoff meeting. You're going to want to open a business bank account for your virtual assistant earnings. I definitely recommend having a bank account that is separate from your personal account. That way you can keep things really, really clean and know exactly what's coming in and exactly what's coming out of your business. And then lastly, for your processes, you're going to develop a weekly plan for keeping track of your money flow, AKA your earnings and expenses. I definitely recommend on a weekly basis, just tracking again, what came in, what came out. For our Savvy System students, we create a profit and loss statement template for them so they can actually track this really, really easily on a week to week basis. When we jump down to legalities, you're going to want to apply for an EIN number. Now you can get this totally for free, you're just going to go to irs.gov. There is a place to claim your EIN number. And this is what you'll actually use to open up that business bank account. This is the number that if a client issues you a 1099 form at the end of the year, that they're going to use that number as opposed to your social security number. You definitely don't want to give out your social security number to clients. And that's why you would want to get a EIN number. I recommend that you set reminders in your calendar for paying quarterly taxes. Again, you're going to want to speak with an accountant about how much you should be paying and when you should be paying those taxes, but just keep it in mind that yes, you are going to have to be paying self-employment taxes as a business owner. And then lastly, you need to decide if you're going to operate as a sole proprietor or go ahead and form an LLC. An LLC will protect you legally, and I definitely recommend it for all virtual assistants. So the rest of this checklist is really dedicated to helping you decide and take action on these items. Again, this whole checklist can be downloaded at the virtualsavvy.com slash business checklist. It's yours for free. And it's just a way to get yourself organized for you to know exactly what services you're going to offer, make some of these big decisions for your business so you can get started. We have additional resources here for you as well. Again, some of our top tools. And of course, we recommend everybody check out our Become a Booked Out Virtual Assistant free training which we will link inside of this PDF as well. All right, Savvies, that's all I have for you today. I hope that this video was beneficial to you. I would love to hear from you in the comments. What other type of content would you like for me to create? What video would you like to see on this channel? We definitely take into consideration all your comments and we create content based off of your feedback. So make sure you comment below with what you would like to see here. And if you're new on the channel, you know what we like to do. We like to beatbox it out. <laughs>